the general public is totally clueless on this and misled. Two thirds of the general public feels, believes that scientists have created life in the laboratory. And this whole idea of the primordial soup model that everybody right. hears about in school, which is molecules were in a pond, there were some lightning strikes, those formed the right sort of molecules that came together that formed a cell, the cells came together and formed uh, these organisms that came out of some pool of water. That is the typical model that is actually not just for fourth graders, that is spoken about even in advanced textbooks in the universities. I'm talking about advanced textbooks mm -hmm. for graduate students in university. That's the extent of the model and that is fallacious. As much as people that believe in God are accused of God of the gaps, if you say anything related to complexity, I've been like mulling over this alternative way of, of labeling something, which is like time of the gaps. It's just insert time into any gap and then therefore it explains everything. And it just is like, we might not, we don't know this yet, but there's a future knowledge coming. Just give it enough time and then we'll be able to solve this. And it seems to me like a way of sidestepping what we're like, what is facing us in terms of the scientific research. But what you said, I think is even more significant because you're saying that this is not a matter of if you stretch out time longer, that that actually solves the core problem here. Is that, is that what, is that right? Because it, these, can you just kind of repeat that again or, or highlight that for me? You're, you're saying that, that it, go, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Time is your enemy. Time does not help you. It hurts you because the times that you have for the use of these molecules is very, very short. In the case of RNA, which is the primary hypothesis on how life might have started, uh, uh, you have no time. You have no time. You only have hours in order to use this. Hours. That's a big, big problem. How, how do people respond to that? Like, what, what, would, what would someone that you're butting up against say in response to that? You know what they say? Nothing. Nothing. They have no response to that. You, you know, you, you'll hear people, uh, recently I heard a talk by Jack Sostek in, I think it was 2020, 2021, something. He did a talk at the University of Chicago, and it was a virtual talk during the COVID period. And one of the ge geologists said, you know, we really don't have to have catalysis or anything because we have so much time. And Jack, who's an expert, in, and he's a Nobel Prize winner, and he's an expert in RNA. He said, actually, we don't have much time. You have to have chemistry that's faster than the degradative chemistry. And so you really don't have much time. But he didn't, he didn't park there and show and, and talk about the extent of how little time you have. You have on the order of hours. If you hmm. make a compound, if I make a compound in my laboratory and I have only a few hours to get it on to the next step, mm -hmm. I am working very, very hard to try mm -hmm. to cool that down, to try to stabilize it, to try to get it on in the next step. Mm -hmm. Hours is a very short amount of time. Now you think on a mindless earlier. So this whole argument of time is absolutely right. It is time of the gaps. They will insert time in their gaps and say time took care of this. And my argument is no, time doesn't take care of this. Time actually hurts you. So you want to claim this thing of time, it hurts you. So, so yeah, yeah that, that's what we're talking about with that. And then the sugars are the hardest class of mm -hmm. compounds. You think, mm -hmm. oh, sugars are easy. Sugars are the hardest class because sugars have all these different tentacles and, and it can hook up to any one of these points. And if it hooks up to the wrong point, that's the wrong, wrong attachment point. And every disorder, every biological disorder can be traced back to also a disorder within the carbohydrates. So it's really fundamental to get that coupling right. Nobody knows how to do that. Nobody knows. <clears throat> There's people that throw out this idea, well, it's not RNA first, it's metabolism first. All right, you have metabolism. So you get a bunch of little molecules. Now what happens? You just say, now what happens? So, so Brandon, what, what they do is they don't confront to address me on this. They just don't answer. People say, well, why don't you publish papers saying that? Well, absolutely I have. I have published five papers in the field. They ignore them. <clears throat> Clemens Reichert. They ignored him. He says, you can't have all this human interaction. He published this paper, I think it was 2018, Nature Communications. So they just keep ignoring 
all of these signs when people throw up roadblocks. And I'm not the first one to point out these problems, not at all. <clears throat> people have, have been writing books about this since the 1980s. Shapiro has been writing books about this. Karn Smith wrote books about this. And they are utterly ignored. So you say, what do people do? And, the, and, and then the, the, the general public is totally clueless on this and misled because the general public surveys have been taken. Two thirds of the general public feels, believes that scientists have created life in the laboratory, mm. life like single cells. And one third of the general public thinks that scientists have made simple uh, 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 complex organisms like, like, like frogs, small complex organisms like frogs in the lab. We've not even made a cell. We don't even know how to make a cell. And everybody is thrown off on this thing. And this whole idea of the primordial soup model that everybody right. hears about in school, which is molecules were in a pond, there were some lightning strikes, those formed the right sort of molecules that came together that formed a cell, the cells came together and formed uh, these organisms that came out of some pool of water. That is the typical mo model that is actually not just for fourth graders, that is spoken about even in advanced textbooks in the universities. I'm talking about advanced textbooks mm -hmm. for graduate students in university. That's the extent of the model, and that is fallacious. Okay, I'm glad that you went to that, to that broad narrative that, that permeates academia, because that's where I wanted to go next, where you corrected me in that Darwin didn't address origin of life. But when you think about the sort of maybe it's even a misuse of the term, but sort of a Darwinian evolutionary model, at least in my mind growing up in school, I do associate with that the idea of the primordial soup and then out of that, you know, sort of Big Bang primordial soup, cells, and then natural selection taking the ball to the, to the, to the modern era, you know? And um, I understand what you're saying, that Darwin actually didn't get into origin of life, but what I'm, what I'm trying to get at when I talk about that is that narrative that you have all of the complexity that exists today as a byproduct of a primordial soup that existed however many billions of years ago. What you're saying is that, and, and I think this is what I was trying to get at at the start in terms of like, what are the stakes? Like, why is this so big, what you're doing? And I think that it is that it, it, it puts a big red X right in the center of that narrative. And you're saying there is zero, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but there's, there's, not sufficient evidence, I was going to say zero, but there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim that life could possibly come from non-life. Is that is that at the gist of what you're bucking up against here? Exactly, today, today. And so what I've always maintained is I don't know what the future is going to have for us, but that if, if, if we can say that life came from non-life, uh, to be able to say that with confidence is is nowhere close it's it's more than a hundred years away at the rate that we're going we are nowhere close to this and my guess it's it's many hundreds of years away before we'd be able to say that with any confidence that life could come from non-life and and uh yeah that is part of the problem i am saying that i'm saying that openly and before i was saying it to a youtuber who sh surely didn't have the the ability to understand because he, he would just read the title of a paper the paper from these very folks that are saying you can do this type of thing. And then when you look at their data and that's not at all what it showed. So I said, okay, let me go right after the researchers. And I'm, I'm using a social, social medium here. Uh, I'm, I'm using YouTube to call these people out. And mm -hmm. I, I thought it was nice about it. I said, just show me guys, show me. And to challenge them and give them 60 days to think about this thing. Which we're still in the middle of that window, right? Where, how many did October 23rd will be the 60th day. So there's, there, they still have, yeah, they have this time to work on it. Oh, by the way, no, no, none of them have sent me any solutions yet to anything.